The Prime Minister of Ukraine warned the BBC that if his country loses its war with Russia, there will be a third world war, and he was pleading with the US Congress to approve a foreign aid package that has been sitting on the table for a while. Dennis S. H. Mile voiced careful optimism that the highly contentious bill, which includes $61 billion, £49 billion, set aside for Kyiv, will be passed by US senators. This Saturday, the House of Representatives will vote on the plan. Funding for both the Indo-Pacific region and Israel is included in the proposal. Prime Minister S. H. Miles stated, We need this money yesterday, not tomorrow, not today, in reference to the U.S. security assistance, when speaking with the BBC in Washington, D.C., on Wednesday. If we will not protect, Ukraine will fall, he stated. Thus, the global security system will be destroyed, and the new security system will need to be found by everyone on the planet or, there will be many conflicts, many such kinds of wars, and in the end of the day, it could lead to the Third World War. Ukraine has already given such dire warnings about the repercussions of a possible defeat. President Volodymyr Zelensky declared last year that Russia may attack Poland and start World War III if it prevailed in the war. However, Kremlin officials have dismissed these assertions as scare tactics from the West. President Vladimir Putin called claims that Russia would attack Eastern Europe in the future, complete nonsense, last month. Poland is one of the NATO members that Russia has never attacked. According to NATO's collective defense accord, attacking one member also targets the other members. Prime Minister S. H. Mile was questioned on Wednesday's interview regarding Republican House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall's recent assertion that members of his own party were being infected by Russian propaganda. Mr. S. H. Mile continued, We should understand that disinformation and propaganda is influencing here in the United States on many people in European Union on many people, such as in Ukraine. Potential aid to Ukraine has been blocked for months by opposition from the right wing of the Republican Party. A few of those legislators have voiced opposition to transferring tens of billions of dollars in aid abroad without first authorizing funding for border security between the United States and Mexico. Furthermore, these conservatives have brushed off as malicious any notion that they might be Kremlin pawns. In a statement released on Wednesday, President Joe Biden declared that he would swiftly sign the package into law when it was approved by Congress, to send a message to our friends and allies around the world. Ukraine's ability to continue fighting Russia, which has greater numbers and an abundance of artillery ammunition, depends significantly on weapon supplies from the US and the West. On the battlefield, months of political gridlock have already had a significant impact. Ammunition shortages and waning morale have pushed Ukraine to retire after finding itself outnumbered and outgunned. It withdrew from Avdyuka, a town it had controlled since the conflict started in 2014 and which was close to seize Donetsk, in February. General Alexander Tarnaski, who was in charge of the withdrawal, claimed that retreating after months of warfare was the only correct solution, citing a 10 to 1 artillery ammunition advantage for his adversaries. President Zelensky issued urgent pleas for increased military assistance to prevent a catastrophic situation, blaming the situation on an artificial deficit of weapons. Dwindling supplies as a result of congressional inaction, is the justification provided by President Biden for the withdrawal. The loss of Avdyuka was the worst for Ukraine since its forces left Bakhmut in May 2023. Both arrived following months of attritional warfare during which Russian forces flooded the battlefield with troops and destroyed houses using heavy artillery. Former UK Joint Forces Command Commander General Sir Richard Barons recently expressed his concern that Ukraine would lose this year if it isn't provided with the equipment and supplies it needs to defend its borders. We are seeing Russia batter away at the front line, employing a 5 to 1 advantage in artillery, ammunition, and a surplus of people, he stated. Ukraine can start to believe it is unbeatable, and why would people want to fight and lose their lives when it reaches that point? Although both sides have lost a great deal of ground in the conflict, Ukraine, unlike Russia, is experiencing a personnel crisis as a result of the rising death toll. To raise hundreds of thousands of new recruits, the administration decreased the conscription age from 27 to 25 earlier this month. According to President Zelensky, 31,000 Ukrainian soldiers have lost their lives since 2022. However, according to US officials, at least 70,000 people have died and many more have been injured. According to a BBC investigation, at least 50,000 Russian soldiers have perished. It's estimated that tens of thousands were hurt. Russia has turned its industrial foundation into a wartime economy, securing deals with North Korea and Iran for drones, ammunition, and missiles while allocating 40% of its national budget to arms.